So let's back up about algae and the two different algae so you can understand it. So first of all, I want you to understand that algae was the first life on Earth almost four billion years ago, and they've got fossils to prove it. it was first spirulina, and then about a billion years after that, chlorella. And uh, algae releases 80, still releases 80% of the oxygen on Earth. And so when it first showed up, it's released so much oxygen that, you know, a billion years later, other life forms could show up. And eventually we had life as we know it. So it's been here forever, way before us. And I mentioned that because algae is everywhere. It's in the oceans, the lakes, the rivers, the streams, the soil. Yes, your swimming pool. Yes, your aquarium. And um, there's two main types of algae. One, I'm sure you're, well, I, I, I call it macroalgae, and it's not just me, it's just general terminology, macroalgae and microalgae. We're gonna be talking mostly about microalgae, but let me tell you what macroalgae is, because they're all part of the same family. So it's the seaweed, dulse, kelp, it's that big stringy stuff that washes up on shore. Now, it has a lot of iodine and it has a lot of fiber. So there's a really there's lots of redeeming features, reasons why you should eat seaweed, but it has virtually no nutrition. Nothing compared to microalgae. Now, microalgae is called microalgae because it's microscopic in size. Something like a million cells of algae can fit on the head of a pin of microalgae. This is how tiny it is. And it feeds everything in the ocean from the whales to the, to the fish. And there's tens of thousands of strains of microalgae of which two, one is called blue green and the other one is called green. There are other strains, but these are the two main ones. And within blue green and green, there are two thousands of strains of those of which one blue green algae is called spirulina and one blue one green algae is called chlorella now you might read about a blue green algae being toxic and i'll say yes uh, absolutely if it came from the ocean but spirulina and chlorella do not come from the ocean they are harvested as food crops these are they're grown hydroponically and whether you grow you buy it from us or from target it's the same you know, generally the same, although we're world renowned for having the highest quality and the pure, purest and safest, and we do third party lab tests. But nonetheless, spirulina and chlorella are grown in fresh water. It's very important you understand that because A, it's not related to the ocean, so there's no toxicity issue, and B, they are the most sustainable crops in the world and don't even use any land, and we can talk about that as well. So, spirulina and chlorella. Well, spirulina is, um, has been, as I mentioned, is endorsed by United Nations as the answer to world hunger because it has three times the amount of protein in the steak. It has the highest protein in the world. And it, it's known for being nourishing and energizing. So a lot of people don't know about spirulina, can't spell it, can't say it. So we call our spirulina energy bits because we thought, I thought that was a lot more sort of intuitive for people. If you see something called energy bits, you assume it's gonna give you energy. Um, and it gives you energy in many ways. And this is what I had to find out for my triathlon club people. So first of all, it has all those amino acids uh, and they're all, uh, the protein is in amino acids. So there's nothing for your body to have to do to get access to the aminos. Normally when you eat animal protein, it can take up to two or three days for your body to break it down into aminos so it can be absorbed and you end up with about five or 10% of it. And your digestion takes 15% of your energy. So if there's no no digestion required, you get you get a, you get literally 15% of your energy back to do other great things. So very um, high in protein, and spirulina is technically a bacteria. It does not have a cellulose wall. Why is that important? Because all that rich amino acids are absorbed instantly into your bloodstream because there is nothing for your body to have to break down to gain access to it. Also, spirulina is loaded with B vitamins. If you've ever seen an energy drink, you'll see that it's loaded with B vitamins. B vitamins convert glucose and protein into energy. Spirulina also has very high amounts of iron, which remember I mentioned earlier carries oxygen, and that's energizing to your brain and to your body. It helps your body release nitric oxide. Nitric oxide is what's called a vasodilator, which opens up your blood vessels so that your blood can flow faster and bring more oxygen and bring more nutrients to your brain and to your body so that you can think and move faster. It's loaded with essential fatty acids like omega-3, which again are very helpful for your brain thought. It has boron, which facilitates um, synapse uh, thought. So overall, 
It's very energizing. So, and it's not the kind of energy that you would get from caffeine or sugar. It's just from nutrition. So it's very steady. You almost don't even notice it. The best way to describe how you'll feel is you'll just feel fresh. That's it. Nothing more. You know, no lightning bolts. You know, no men leaping off the tall, you know, tall buildings in a single bound. You just feel fresh and ready. Pretty sweet. And there's zero carbs, one calorie, 40 vitamins and minerals, all your electrolytes, uh, and everything comes from food, so it works harmoniously in your body. It is the easiest food to um, to consume. It's given to newborns, pets, granddads, grandmoms, every age group, no interactions. It's the perfect food. In fact, I will tell you, I saw a chart that identified the nutrient value of mother's breast milk and all the aminos in the breast milk. And I thought, gosh, that looks awfully familiar. And sure enough, I checked back with spirulina and it was virtually the same, it was the same aminos in virtually the same proportions. And we know that mother's breast milk is the perfect food. Well, guess what? Spirulina and chlorella are next in line because they are virtually identical. So pretty amazing, huh?